Hello everyone, my name is Kirk Mason. I'm an AI ML solution innovation consultant at Snowflake. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use ML Sidekick, a Streamlit app designed to guide you through the process of building and deploying Snowpark ML models into your Snowflake account. Often writing code to develop a machine learning model takes time, even for a seasoned data scientist. And for business users without coding experience, the learning curve might prevent them from testing out ideas they have for potential models. That's where ML Sidekick comes to the rescue. This Streamlit app, which can be run directly in Snowflake, provides a no-code interface that allows any user to easily train a model on their data, log the model to a model registry, and evaluate its performance. The simplicity of the interface unlocks the power of machine learning for users who want a quick and easy way to explore Snowpark ML and iterate through various model specifications as they work. So let's dive into ML Sidekick and see how easy it can be to build predictive models in Snowflake. The first thing I'll do is deploy our Streamlit app to Snowflake. So I'll open in VS Code the deploy app notebook and run all. This will upload the Streamlit app code and any supporting files. Now that that's finished running, I can go to SnowSite and look at the app. And here you see ML Sidekick. The ML Sidekick app is now running in our Snowflake account. You can see here on the home screen, we have a view of the model registry. And this shows us all the models that we've already trained. And you can see that they exist in various databases and schemas. Before we explore the model registry, let's create a model to see how easy it is to use ML Sidekick to create a new model using Snowpark ML and even explore the code that was used to create that model if we choose. So first we click Create Project, ML Model. And this is gonna take us to the modeling screen that has three tabs, Select Dataset, Pre-Processing, and Modeling. First we'll select our dataset. And for this example, we're gonna use the Titanic dataset that a lot of data scientists are familiar with. It's a pretty classic learning dataset. And you can see here, there are various features in that data set, like the class of the passenger on the Titanic ship, whether the passenger was male or female, the age of the passenger, et cetera, as well as if the passenger survived the sinking of the Titanic or not. And we're gonna be in this model predicting the likelihood of a passenger surviving. So this will be a classification example. So now that we have our data set selected, we can click Next to go to the pre-processing screen. Here you see a note that says we can click on the icon, the magnifying glass icon over here, to dig deeper into our data. And it gives a few suggestions, like if there are null values, we might want to add a simple imputer as one of our pre-processing options. If we have string features or categorical features, we may want to add a one-hot encoder. So let's click on that to investigate our data a little further. So we can see here all the features in our data set it tells you if they're numeric or categorical. So we can see already that we have one categorical column that we'll need to one hot encode. It gives you the number of unique values. If there are any missing values, we would wanna add a simple imputer, but we can see here that we don't have any null values, so we don't need to add an imputation step. Additionally, if you wanted to see a histogram of, let's say the, the age feature, you can see here the distribution of ages. So now that we've explored our data a little, we know that we need to add a one hot encoder step because of this categorical column. So we can go down here and we can select all the input features that we are gonna use to build our model. So let's just select a handful of these. And then the target column, what we're trying to predict is the survived column. And then we'll click add step. And this will give us the drop down option to add a step. Here we don't need a simple imputer because we didn't have any missing values, but if we did, we could add a column here to impute. And then you could add another step if you wanted to. So we know we need a one hot encoder, so we'll add that. Because we didn't have any uh, missing values, we'll go ahead and get rid of this imputation step. So I'll hit the trash can icon, and all we're left with is our one hot encoding preprocessing step. We could generate a preview of what the one hot encoded columns would look like. Here we'll just move on and click next to go to the modeling tab. 
Here we're given the option of model type. In this case, we're gonna be predicting if it's a one or a zero, one meaning they survived, zero meaning they did not. So this is a classification problem. And then we have model algorithm options. For classification right now, we have XGBoost classifier and logistic regression. Let's stick with XGB classifier. Here we can toggle on or off if we want to retrieve the model metrics to get an idea of how the model performs. I'll leave that on so we can see the model metrics. And then you click fit model and run predictions. And now it's going to fit the model to the data. It's going to make some predictions and then give us the performance metrics when it compares those predictions to the actual values. And it looks like we have our information. The model has been trained. So you can scroll down here and you can see some of the data points along with the prediction, the survival prediction. You have your metrics. Here we have classification metrics. If we had done a regression problem, we would have different metrics for that are appropriate for regression. We also have, because this is a classification, a confusion matrix. And here we have the feature importance for the features that went into the model. In this case, we chose three features. And you can see here that whether the passenger was male or female is the most significant indicator of if they would survive or not. Now that we have trained a model, we can deploy it to the model registry straight through the app using the save to registry feature. So here we can click save to registry. Let's name the model Titanic. And because I ran this model earlier, it's going to see that that model already exists and it's gonna ask us if we wanna save this as a new version of the Titanic model. It'll get its own version name if we click save new version, which I will. And here you can see it says model registered. So in a second, we can go look at that uh, model on the model registry page on that home screen of the ML Sidekick app. Before we do that, let's go ahead and get a notebook copy of this whole modeling process. So here we'll call the project Titanic and this will be the name of the notebook. We're gonna choose a database in a schema. This will be the database and schema that our Snowflake notebook can be uploaded to. And here I'll put it in a different schema than the one we're using for our data. So we have two options here. We can create a Snowflake notebook or we could download a notebook. In this case, we'll create a Snowflake notebook, and this is gonna put a Snowflake notebook into our Snowflake account. If we click download, we can also download that notebook, and it'll be called titanic.ipynb, and you could run that locally if you like. So now that we have registered our model and produced a notebook, let's go look at the model on the homepage. And here we are back on the homepage. You can see right here our Titanic model. If we click in the column next to that model, we'll see some more options appear to us. So if you click only one model, you can compare versions of that model. If I were to click a second model, you can compare the two different models. Right now, let's just compare two versions of the Titanic model. So the one that I just created is called Grumpy Cal 2. And earlier I created a logistic regression version of the model called Helpless Wombat 3. So let's compare those two versions. And you can see here the metrics between the two versions. So the one I just created has a F1 score of 0.82, whereas the logistic regression has a F1 score of 0.73. Additionally, if you would like to test these versions against new data, maybe these were trained um, a while ago and you have new data since they were trained, you can go to this test option here and you can select your, train, your testing data set. Here we'll select Titanic testing and then we can click start test. And what this is doing is it's taking the models from the model registry and it is using the predict function that exists 
with those models and it is predicting the test set for each model. And here we can see that it finished predicting for the new model we just created, Grumpy Cow 2. So on this new test set, we have our performance metrics. And now it's making predictions using the logistic regression model on the test set. So here we can see on our new data, on our testing set, the new model that we just built is performing a little bit better. So we have an F1 score of 0.75 versus the logistic regression model we built earlier is 0.6972. So this is something you can use to kind of track your models that already exist and compare them maybe to a new version that you have or you're developing. And that's how you can use ML Sidekick to quickly develop and register a model and evaluate its performance on new data or compare it to other versions of the model. The last thing we'll do is take a quick look at the notebook that we uploaded to Snowflake. So here we go to notebooks and you remember we called it Titanic. So we open the Titanic notebook and in this notebook, you can see the code that you could run to create and register the model that we just built and registered using the app. Here you can see we import necessary packages. We create our session. We get our training data set. We added in a one hot encoder before building a XGB classifier. You can see here, these are the columns that we specified. We wanted to use as features, input features to the model. This is our target variable and the output column where the predictions will land. Here you can also see that if you wanted to do grid search CV, there's a code sample that you could use to do hyperparameter tuning. Here we fit the pipeline and then we can predict and then here's the code that we use to register the model to the model registry. This is very useful because if you wanted to make small adjustments to the model, maybe you wanted to specify a specific hyperparameter combination for your classifier, you could go into this code and change the modeling code without having had to write all the code from scratch. The app built this for you and now you can tailor it to your needs. Let's recap what we did. After loading our Streamlit code into Snowflake, we use the ML Sidekick app to select a data set, add a pre-processing step to our pipeline, and then train a Snowpark ML model on our historical data. After looking at performance metrics, we logged our trained model to our model registry, and then we saw how to explore and compare versions of registered models on the app's home screen. And finally, we took a look at the Snowflake notebook created by the app as a way to further explore the Python code that could be used to generate similar models. It's easier than ever to get up and running with Snowpark ML, and we're excited to hear about all the ways you use Snowflake capabilities to unlock the value in your data. If you thought this video was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. See you next time.